Hermetic Hour, and it is June 10th, 2010. Tonight we're presenting an introductory lecture on Enochian magic. I'm your host, Pope Runyon, and uh, I've been at uh, practicing Enochian magic for quite a while, I think about 40 years. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert on it, and anybody who does, <laughs> it's such a such a marvelously complex system that anyone who does claim to be an expert, you better watch out. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, you know, I'd like to read an opening Enochian uh, passage here. It goes, Odo Kikle Ka'a, Odo Zazma, Pla Pili Yadnamad. Now what that means is, is Open the mysteries of your creation and make us partakers of the undefiled knowledge. Now, uh, uh, somehow or other, I think we, we can't get through an hour talking about an Okian without defiling some part of it because, as I say, it's very complex. But we're going to try to make it, we're going to, especially for people who are really not familiar with it, we're going to try to make it uh, a little more accessible. Um, now, Adokian magic is was originally the creation of Dr. John Dee, who was Queen Elizabeth's astrologer and a secret agent for the crown, the original, by the way, and that's where Ian Fleming got the got the 007 for his Jamie Bond, was because that was John Dee's code number when he was communicating directly to Queen Elizabeth. Um, John Dee was a very famous mathematician and a scholar uh, in Elizabethan times. That's, of course, the same time as Shakespeare. And, um, and John Dee was uh, a very, actually a devout, a devout Christian. He, he uh, uh, not what we would call a fundamental Christian. He, he had, uh, in those days, uh, uh, Dee would be described as more of a Rosicrucian type. In other words, he, he had a great interest in mysticism and, and in, uh, and in the occult, and in those days, uh, this was more accepted, providing you were on the side of the angels. Uh, and he uh, was very interested in communicating with the angels, and and being a mathematician and being a scholar of languages, he he, uh, he read Hebrew, he read Latin, he read Greek. Uh, he was uh, really trying to to get in communication with uh, with the hierarchy of the angels. Now, in order to do this, uh, in those days, um, uh, the Western world didn't have yoga. They didn't have yoga, and they didn't understand hypnosis, and they didn't they didn't uh, really know how to. How to perfect, how, you know, how to acquire psychic ability if you didn't have it. So consequently, uh, D needed to acquire, hire a scryer. In other words, a guy to do his psychic scrying for him. And D, of course, would would uh, jot all this down and 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 interpret it. But he needed a scryer. He needed a psychic. So he'd gone through a couple of them, and, and finally he found a, a fellow by the name of Edward Kelly, uh, who had a great deal of talent, and he hired Edward Kelly to be his scryer in this angel magic experiment. Uh, now this is back in the you know in the uh, in the, in the 1500s, and and uh, and so Kelly uh, Kelly was a very talented psychic. But Kelly was also um, uh, not a very savory character. Uh, he had been arrested for fraud, and according to, I don't know whether it's never been proven, but it was said that he had his ears lopped off as a as punishment for fraud, and that that's why he wore his hair down over his ears. Uh, Kelly had a kind of an unsavory reputation, although he was uh, he was something of an alchemist, and he was fairly well, you know, fairly well read in Agrippa, and, 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 uh, but nowhere near the scholar that Dee was. Now, they started out, and over a period of five years, 
uh, with Kelly on the crystal ball and the dark mirror and D with the notebooks back there taking notes and, and asking the questions, they started working with a series of angels. Now I want to explain one thing um, about Anokian that's that, that uh, people that you know new people coming to it probably don't understand. Uh, in those days, the Book of Enoch, which was rediscovered in the 1700s, the Book of Enoch was not available. The only references that they that they knew of in Enoch were the ones in the regular Bible, and, and they knew that Enoch talked with the angels and was uh, it was taken up to God. But this whole uh, tradition of the fallen angels from the Book of Enoch was not available to them. And so consequently, they, they did their own version of it. In other words, they talked to the angels themselves. They didn't have uh, the Book of Enoch as a go-by. And that's important to note because there are differences as those of you get into the Book of Enoch and then you get into the Enochian system and you realize the two systems are not really exactly the same. And, and that's the reason for that. So um, what they... What they uh, what they got over this five-year period was a very, very complex and a very, uh, a very um, marvelous, marvelous system of communication and and of magical structure, magical systems and communication. And isn't just one system in Anokia, and there are several systems. Um, and uh, the, the, so what they have here is a whole universe of angels who are talking to them. Now, this thing finally, finally came down to uh, a system whereby uh, the uh, being, <laughs> being a secret agent for the crown and whatever, D uh, kind of kind of wanted uh, something to where he could. Uh, a system where he could control uh, the politics of various uh, countries in the world by magic. Now, um, I know that doesn't sound very Christian, but it does sound very Elizabethan, actually, being his, you know, being the the agent and the counselor of the queen. Uh, so uh, they started working on a system with the angels uh, talking to them uh, in, in the, uh, that, that would that would divide the whole known world into 30 sections, and they would have angels that they would contact which would control each section. And their uh, chief angel that they, they were dealing with, Nalvaj, uh, he went along with this, and he was going to give them the, the, the divisions. Now, they developed a, a system called terrestrial victory, which means just what it says. In other words, this is victory over the uh, provinces of the earth. Now, um, so what they ended up with was, oh, it's the 30 divisions with all these various uh, sigils and governors. I uh, have three governors per uh, per section or per country or whatever, and uh, four governors for the uh, for the one that began the, the start of this. Um, and this system, they actually at one point tried to sell this system to a Polish uh, nobleman who was in line for the crown of Poland. Uh, he, he, you know, he wasn't buying it. But, but the system itself uh, became, eventually became uh, transformed. And nobody knows quite when this took place after Dee and Kelly died. The system became uh, metamorphosized into... A, a scrying system that goes from the lowest level of the astral plane all the way up to the highest level of um, perhaps what uh, the Theosophists would call the mental plane or whatever. You want to take that kind of a structure for it. Uh, and very similar in many ways to the 30 Aethon, the 30 Aeon system uh, that Valentini and the Gnostic had come up with. There's a, and I, I, I'm wondering if anybody has uh, made that connection, you know, really on Nokian, because it is very similar to Valentinian Gnosticism in this respect. Um, and what this system uh, does is it 
takes the whole universe and it accesses it by a series of tablets, 44 square uh, um, tablets, that that are each attributed to one of the elements. Now, uh, this takes a little bit of uh, explaining, uh, and I will try to get through this, you know, for you so you can understand a little better. But first, before I, I say that, I got to tell you a joke. Uh, <laughs> back during the the end of the beatnik era and the beginning of the hippie era, which is about the 1967 or something like that, UCLA invited um, invited D.T. Suzuki, the Japanese uh, Zen, Zen Buddhist master, over to give a speech at UCLA. And they had about 1,500 students fill the auditorium. And D.T. Suzuki came out uh, on the stage, and he looked, he bowed to everybody, and he said, Zen Buddhism is very hard to understand. Thank you. And he bowed again, and he left, and that was the end of the lecture. Well, you know, it's almost as if somebody had come out and said, I don't get magic. It's very hard to understand. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's, so let's, let's try to see if we can make it a little more understandable. Now, Anokian magic operates similar to, these tablets look like a crossword puzzle. Now, what they do, the, the tablets, the four tablets, the watchtower tablets, the four watchtowers of the universe, it's as if you're standing in the center of uh, the zodiac. You know, let's say you're at the center of the zodiac, and you remember in hermetic science, you're, you're God, you're, you're the representative of God. So you're standing at the center of the universe in a circle, and you're in the zodiacs all around you. Well, in the Middle Ages, in in astrology, they did square horoscopes, and they like to they like to put all the elements together in one, uh, you know, the three the the the, the four cardinal signs, uh, the the three. Uh, the, um, the earth signs, the water signs, the fire signs, the air signs, they put them all in, in bunches, in bunches rather than run them all around the circle. So you have these tablets. They do represent the whole universe, uh, the zodiacal universe, but the cardinal signs are all yep, in separate tablets. So what you end up with is you end up with the, uh, the air tablet in the east, the fire tablet, all the fire signs in the south, all the water signs in the west, and all the um, and all the earth signs in the north, and uh, and you stand in the center of this. Um, now, um, these uh, tablets can all be put together into one big square, and then you have a cross down the middle of them that ties them all together, and then that's called the tablet of union, and that's pulled out and made into one little tablet, and then you hang that in the middle, and that unifies them all. Those are the highest angels are on there on the tablet of union. These uh, these tablets look kind of like um, like big crossword puzzles. 